This episode is brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited Webflow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. I was asked by Adrian Lexington to take a look at a new no-code solution, and I had half an hour to spare, so I thought I'd sit down and kind of review it from a front-end dev's perspective and give you my honest opinion just first impressions basically and, and obviously the all important looking at the code that it generates and giving you a, an idea of that and so forth. So it's called Web Studio. Your classic purple. Purple is definitely the color of 2023. Um, first impressions. I like it. It looks like it definitely looks like as you would expect a no-code web editor to uh, to to look. You've got your DOM here, much sim more simplified version. I took a look at Framer uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is where I did the live stream, and you know, for me, I'm looking as a developer. I ca as much as I try. I'm sorry. Um, I'm looking at it from a development perspective. For me, Framer was abstracting too much away from you and it really felt like a my first website builder. Powerful one, I'm not saying it's not powerful, but the approach, and in some, and, and in some cases rightly so, they try and abstract a lot of the coding and development concepts, which it's all well and good from a usability standpoint, but when it comes to debugging and figuring out websites, which inevitably you will need to do, you will need to learn to use the inspector and figure out what's going wrong because if a tool abstracts too much away from you, you're then so beholden to that tool, trusting that that tool is doing everything right for you. And when it breaks or it doesn't work or you wanna do something slightly more advanced, you are, it's completely out of your hands. So. To this tool, it's starting to lean into a bit more coding concepts and you know a DOM that you'd expect. But once again, I barely scrolled down the homepage, so let's just shut up and get on with it. Um, no platform lock-in, which is interesting. You can self-host, contribute, which is nice. I mean, that's what I like about Pine Grow is that you're building something that you don't, you're not locked into their system. That's really, really important, actually. And I saw um, uh, Ryan Ma, um, I've, oh, sorry, I butchered his name, but uh, he used to be part of FinSuite. I think he's on uh, State of the Flow now or something. He rightly wrote, made a video on the, you know, just being worried that, that you're locked into an ecosystem that is quite hard to get out of. They are opening up, but I, I'm much more in favor of just being having free reign in something on something, you know, to have to pay to get your code out of it. To me, it's just not, not great. Um, deployments on Cloudflare, uh, graduate beyond classes. So I'm guessing this is the combo class thing, which I've never understood with Webflow. The combo class thing is just, you know, um, it's so limiting. It's so limiting, and I just, and I just, I just don't understand it. Uh, GDPR compliance, which is interesting. I'm yet to make a video on GDPR because I have a few thoughts and feelings about it and um, would like to get those down. So if you want to hear that, let us know. Personalized sharing links, image optimization for responsive WebP images. Be interested to know what their interpretation of responsive means um, because that's not exactly a USP just saying an image is responsive. Is it actually swapping those images out? Um, feature of roadmap. That's nice. It's, it feels like they've taken every, it's look, they've looked at Webflow's kind of, you know, wish list or, or complaints and they've sort of really addressed those in this homepage here, which is quite cool. So here we go, get early access. Great, first project, very simple interface here. Very, very simple. It looks like it's some sort of beta. So uh, um, my first site. Okay, do you know what? I'm gonna go back. Let's look at this because I, I did have a look at this really quickly and it was something worth bringing up. So, so five custom domains, 10,000 monthly views, two gig asset storage, which is, you know, it's fair enough. Unlimited sites and unlimited pages and limited collaborators. Really interesting proposition for free. I wonder how long that will last. Um, it does say for non-commercial projects, mind 
which basically if you're, if you're getting paid to make a website, you, you should not and cannot use that. However, you know, I know a lot of people don't really take note of that kind of stuff, but the, the fact that I've created a project, so just to go back here, dashboard, I've created a project and then within that project, I can actually create multiple sites. So this could be, you know, this could be flow state, for instance, and all the various different websites we have to do with that. So interesting. I wonder if these different sites have different like domain. Well, the, the projects don't have any properties, just the, just the site. Let's have a look. Let's just go in and I want to see the site settings or something. Publish domain. So you claim site there. I like that. I like that. How you just don't, you're not asked to like do all that until you're ready to publish. It's sort of putting it, putting it in the way of the natural steps rather than going around hunting for it. Um, let's go. So we're on the body. L local convert to token. I have no idea what that is, but unless that's their name for style, let's go back here. 10 times a page match limit, open source build, that's interesting. Um, what was that class thing? With style sources built on top of design system tokens, keeping your work in sync with your design system won't feel like a burden. Now I was talking to a friend last night about design tokens and I've not used them. I can see the, the benefit of them. Uh, I was introduced to them a little while ago but I've never, I've not used them. I've not worked in big enough teams or, or corporations or anything like that since doing my own thing. So I just, I haven't looked into them. But the point is, this is interesting. And I guess they respond and behave like styles. Or maybe this is, you build your system in here and this is the token that then the website consumes. Don't know, so layout, block, spacing, sizing, all your normal stuff. What sort of, well, they're supporting the DVH. DVH is super hot right now, super hot. Um, SVH really, actually, to be fair. Aspect ratio is nice. Could do some defaults there, I think. Overflow, nice object fit, position. Don't like that, don't like all that. I like the way that Pine Grow and Webflow do it in this sort of thing. Uh, Z index. And I like the way that Pine Grow group your um, different you know, categories at the top here and I can just click and go because this scrolling, I mean, this doesn't look too bad because it doesn't look like it supports an awful lot, but it'd be nice if I can just click, go to my grid, click, go to my display. Borders, color width, radius, very basic. Very, very basic. Now, is this contextual? That's the other thing. So let's add a mm, slot. Interesting. Guessing a slot is for, I wonder if this is built on top of view or something then. Um, adding uh, content, like, I don't know. I guess it's the same as properties in Webflow. HTML embed right at the top, which is interesting. So, Properties to panel to insert HTML code. Where's the properties panel? Oof, that's not nice. Just having that little thing here. What do they expect you to do with that? Execute script on canvas. Interesting. Give you a lot. They give you a lot for free. But once again, this is not for commercial projects. So this is this is going to be really really nice. Like this would be an amazing tool that Webflow could have as like an introductory, like it's a completely reduced interface that's completely like a sandbox environment that you haven't get, you're not given loads of stuff to look into. I suggested that PineGrow do that, uh, a reduced user interface just to help you start dragging and dropping and various things like that. Um, this just, just feels really simple and nice. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm hesitant on the Interesting. I'm hesitant on the uh, quarter, the how far this can go. Instance name body. Is that an ID? Uh, oops. The body. Let's just do that. And see what that does. Custom property. Oops, shine. 
I'm guessing this is default value. These are just attributes. Can I type my own attribute in here? Let's just check that. Oh no, there's the ID. So I wonder what the instance name is. So I'm not liking, go to app. I'm not liking that, just go to Twitter product hunt. The documentation is not really front and center for this or the instructions on what things do. So what's the difference? What does instance names do? Uh, what is a slot and all that kind of stuff? Like the onboarding experience is a bit lackluster. And that, again, I can't immediately see where, <clears throat> where any kind of documentation is. Like, how do I use it? There's no video, um, there's no whatever, but it is clean and simple just to kind of drop it in. Code text, what the hell? Oh, okay, so it's just for a code element. Uh, link text, link block, they're taking the web flow thing of things, thing of things. Headings, image, forms. So you know what, this is super easy because, and there's up obviously your assets, and there's your page there, can I go to page settings? Very simple, very, very simple. This is a wonderful, See, I'm already kind of, let's, let's just build something real quick and then let's, um, and look at the code. So let's just do a box, which I'm assuming is a div. Uh, let's put a min height of, let's put this SVH, just do that. It does support it, look. Um, and let's see what we get on with here. I'm gonna do display flex, so I wanna position, let's just do a box in the box and put a header in the box. Um, uh, uh, my first, first one back, and is there, um, yeah, a shortcut thing would be nice, like what it has. Do, do, do. Paragraph, um, discover bats for yourself, right, and let's. Did, did. So let's make this now display flex. Because that's, that's, that's what I'm going back to when I spoke about earlier, when I think of things in a dev way. Whereas if you're gonna abstract it uh, away from it and call it your own thing, you'd be like position, position, position center or something. I don't know, you start to have to make up your own terminologies for things, which is fun and cool. But there we go, right. I cannot find, dis oh, here we go, I'm an idiot, flex, okay. And now we get, so it is contextual, you get, that's nice, that's really nice, that is. That take note, pine grow on web flow, that's nice. That's a nice abstraction. Not too much. And then this one, text center. So I'm, I'm aware that I'm not typing classes or, or tokens as they call it in this. Um, and I mean, local, they're all called local. How interesting. I probably, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna look into design tokens because I need to, need to scrub up on that. So let's um, make this a background. Um, interesting. Is that a bug? Beautiful. And then color, background, outline, color. Okay, hmm. Let's publish. Oh, that's actually, let's. Okay, a custom link. How does the collaboration thing work as well? It's just not. Let's just change that and see what the. Um, breakpoint thing looks like. Yeah, the collaboration thing. Play, it's a preview. There you go. I've claimed Wombat. Oh. Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> right, I've claimed Wombat's RS, yeah. .wst.io, publish. 
Rubbish. Right now. <coughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. Let's have a look here. Okay. This will do. So what did I put that the body on? The body, maybe, okay, so then maybe that's organization in the side here. Yeah. There's nothing that says anything about the body here. Anyway. So it is, it does look like it's creating things in the browser. In height. So these are those tokens, I guess. Again, I've not looked into them as much. Div.where, I've never seen that before. I need to look up on those CSS things as well. Oh, there's so much moving in the CSS world at the moment that it's hard to keep up, but I do want to sit down and look through. Maybe I'll make a video that would be lovely for someone like myself, where it's just like, here is everything that's gone on in the last six months with CSS. So with that, box, prop, tag, so I can, look, I can tag, section navigator. It's all the same stuff as uh, Webflow, really. What's box? Interesting, I mean, the code is clean. I can't think why it wouldn't be. There's not, it doesn't seem like there's any con, Doesn't seem like there's any concept of components yet. Yet they've got slots. Let's just drag that in and see what a slot is. So it's just a div right now. Okay. No concept of components, no concept of reusability here, but I'm sure that's probably coming. Okay. I think that'll do it. So my final thoughts would be that I think this is a fantastic website playground to like learn how to do basic things in and build a very basic website. Um, they've got the interface down, it's nice and clean. Um, I think it's just a case of sitting back and waiting for it to develop as a tool to see how they'll differentiate from things like Framer and things like Webflow because it feels like they're very much hot on the heels of Webflow right now. Um, but the simplicity is nice. I think they could they could do with a better onboarding experience or at least put documentation or information front more front and center. I don't want it to clutter the interface, but just so happens, you know, a little help icon down the bottom left where I can just ask an AI what to do or how to do certain things or links to documentation, something like that. But other than that, nice little tool. I'll, um, I, I give it, let's, let's make up a star rating. Out of six and a half stars, I'd give it three and three quarters. Keep it up. <laughs>